It's coming. SpaceX appears to be preparing Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 for their first full-stack demonstration. And there is evidence to support this claim. The first one is related to Starbase's rocket-catching arms. The Mechazilla robot arms created by SpaceX are lovingly referred to as chopstick arms. These mechanical arms have been built to make lifting, moving, and stacking the SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy boosters easier and quicker. The standard options, such as cranes, also accomplish this feat. But cranes are more susceptible to wind than the mechanical robot arms SpaceX has created. The chopstick arms have also been made to catch part of the Starship as it returns to Earth, saving time energy, and resources. SpaceX recently is upgrading these arms. For example, the ship lifting points on the chopsticks have been deployed, as you can see here. On the other hand, SpaceX's LR-11000 is hooked up to Ship 24, lifting Squid for the potential lift of Ship 24 off suborbital pad B. These two things separately don't mean much, but when they happen all together, they do indicate stacking is coming. Meanwhile, the team is working on repairing heat tiles on Ship 24. Additionally, the company is also working on the orbital launch mount. Huge thanks to Ezekiel Overstreet for these amazing moments. And don't forget to follow his Twitter account as well as his YouTube channel for the latest updates from Starbase. In short, given the activities seen at Starbase in recent days, one would think stacking of Ship 24 on Booster 7 may be days away. That being said, We'll have to wait and see what next steps they do to see whether such stacking is temporary or will it stay all the way until the eventual launch. There may be good reasons just to stack temporarily, but it's hard to know exactly why. Regardless, once stacked, we can still dream about testing a fully stacked Starship rocket for the second time shortly. Indeed, it is going to be the second time. The first test of a full-stack Starship belongs to the iconic duo Ship 20 and Booster 4. For its first fully integrated test, SpaceX appears to have put Starship through a fairly limited cryogenic proof, a test where flammable propellant is replaced with a cold or cryogenic fluid that's similar enough to subject a rocket to thermal and mechanical stresses. For Ship 20 and Booster 4's combined debut, Super Heavy was filled maybe 10 to 20% of the way and Starship around 25 to 50%, with either liquid nitrogen or a combination of liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen. It's difficult to tell, but it's unlikely any methane fuel was involved. Beyond the basic mechanical demonstration that Super Heavy Booster 4 is strong enough to support a partially loaded Starship, which probably wasn't in doubt, it's likely that the main purpose of this first full-stack cryo-proof was to ensure that all the systems required to fuel Starship on top of Super Heavy were working as expected. That's no small feat, given that Starship is both the tallest rocket and largest upper stage ever assembled. To fully fuel a Starship for an orbital launch around 1,200 tons or around 2.65 million pounds of propellant, or liquid nitrogen for a cryo-proof, which is equivalent to the weight of more than two entire Falcon 9 rockets, must be pumped around 85 meters or 275 feet up Starbase's integration tower. That requires thousands of feet of plumbing and a symphony of giant valves and pumps, all of which must work in concert, without leaking, jamming, or freezing to fuel Starship. As such, the first full-stack cryo-proof was just as much or more of a test of the orbital launch site's launch-slash-integration tower and tank farm. Thus, most likely, the first fully integrated test of S-24 and B-7 will be the cryo test. The first test is just the start of a long process, though, and it's likely that SpaceX will attempt an increasingly ambitious series of tests with the duo 24-7 a few weeks later. Next, let's shift our focus to the weirdest SpaceX flex we've ever seen. For a company whose sole job is Birdish rocketry. SpaceX sure does flex, as new footage of one of its ground-based monstrosities known as the Can Crusher demonstrates yet again. SpaceX's Can Crusher, basically, is a brutally colossal machine designed to test rockets by squeezing them with incredible force. 
The can crusher in this photo was seen rolling down Boca Chica as it heads to test components for Starship B7.1, which SpaceX is currently working on assembling. Here is the latest glimpse we've gotten of this arachnid-esque can crusher, but it's not the first time we've seen it either at SpaceX or anywhere. As the name suggests, the space flight industry's can crushers are giant compactors that, in essence, do the same thing that aluminum can compactors do to empty soda cans, except these operate on a much larger and much more dangerous level. Place a soda can on the floor in an upright position and then stand on it, gradually applying weight until the can ripples and collapses. A NASA post from 2011 when the agency undertook the world's largest can crusher test at the time reads, It's similar to what a team of NASA engineers will do to an immense aluminum lithium rocket fuel tank in late March. Their hope is to use data from the test to generate new shell buckling design factors that will enable lightweight, safe, and sturdy skins for future launch vehicles. In essence, can crushers like those used by NASA and SpaceX are meant to simulate the force of takeoff and test to make sure rocket components are ready for the stress of the entire ordeal. While NASA's original can crushers look a lot like their smaller, consumer-grade counterparts, the one employed by SpaceX is as next generation as the company's rockets. Those tentacle looking things are actually spread out like bungees during testing to secure whichever part is being stress tested, as previous renders show. Though can crushers have been a big part of pre-launch rocket testing for more than a decade, we don't often get to see that part of the action, which is why this video of the deflated equipment being rolled around on the launch pad looks all the weirder. Finally, let's all congratulatory pats on the back for SpaceX's new achievement. The company launched a novel and colossal commercial communications satellite into orbit late Saturday and set a new launch record for its Falcon 9 rocket at the same time. This is a record-breaking 14th landing for this booster, Jesse Anderson, a SpaceX production engineering manager, said during live commentary. The mission also set a few other records. It was SpaceX's first five-engine burn mission to deploy payloads in orbit, as well as the company's heaviest rideshare payload ever. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk also wrote of the flight on Twitter, sharing that it was one of our most complex missions. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.